So, uh, hello everybody. So I work as a Kubernetes engineer at Swisscom. We do a lot of like managed systems and this is pretty important for us, but my passion has always been Kubernetes and that's how I actually went into Go. So you're gonna see some weird things. This is not gonna be as technical as the previous talk, but it's gonna be weird. This is what I do every day. Like, you can talk to me like Go is optional. Anything else is optional, but Kubernetes is there. I don't think there passes like one day where I don't think about Kubernetes, nor do I implement something. So, show of hands, please. Who knows what a Kubernetes deployment is? Awesome, okay, this is gonna be easy. So I guess we can just skip that part. Is there, is there anybody who wants me to explain that? Yeah. Perf, okay. <laughs> Damn it, okay. <laughs> so, the main idea is that I'm not going to explain what Kubernetes is, like, like 30 seconds maybe explanation. The idea is that you're managing clusters of systems. So you have multiple machines that you want to somehow agree on a certain state. In order to do that, you use Kubernetes because Docker Swarm died. And you have a master nodes that have to reach consensus regarding the state of the system, and you have worker nodes that usually only execute the workload. You can also have master nodes execute workloads, but that's a different topic. And within those worker nodes, the only thing that they can run is usually containers. So in this case, this is a slide that I stole from Joe Beta, and that's why it still says like Docker, because now it probably would say cryo or container D, so some sort of a container runtime, and then it would run your application. And in order to do that, what is an application? What, why would I need this? So the point is, you would say, okay, please run this type of an Nginx server, and I need multiple replicas of it because I expect to have a lot of load. And in this case, you just say, okay, run two of them. It's going to make sure that at least on two machines that you have available in your cluster, it's going to run two instances. And if you decide to change it to one, it's going to kill one. That's a simple controller in Kubernetes. It used to be called a replica set. Now it's called a deployment, which includes a replica set. So, I know this is like going really fastly through Kubernetes, but I knew I had 15 minutes, so eh. Does anybody still not really know what Kubernetes, okay, show of hands, who doesn't really know what Kubernetes is? Okay, we just move on. We'll, we'll find out later. So the idea of the operators is basically, you take these controllers that Kubernetes implements natively, and you extend them, and you build your own. So you build some sort of a contro controller that knows better how to handle some sort of a resource. So we're gonna find out later why exactly I chose to build one, which makes no sense, but yeah. Yeah, another slide I stole from Red Hat. So you just take logic that you would use in your regular, I don't know, let's say your deployment is Elasticsearch. Kubernetes knows what a deployment is, what a daemon set is, what a stateful set is, but it might have issues knowing how to properly configure an Elasticsearch cluster. So for that, Elasticsearch built an operator which makes sure that when you say, give me an Elasticsearch cluster, it will give you a properly configured and highly available one. While otherwise you'd have to build it yourself. And yeah, yeah, that's actually the same thing that I just said, but written on a slide, cool. Now, the thing is I'm decent-ish at Kubernetes, I'm new to Go, but I really have a different approach to doing things because I want to understand how it works and how it breaks. And in order to understand how it breaks, I want to run it at home. So the same as Michael runs his servers in his kitchen, I run this under my TV. So this is my Kubernetes cluster that sits at home and basically it's just seven special Raspberry Pis that I, I know for sure how to debug because I've unplugged them, I've plugged them in, and then I've noticed Oh, it died, I need to fix it. And you feel like you're operating your own data center, but really you're just operating your tiny cluster under your TV. So how can I take this cool thing and apply it to operators? Let's build a drone swarm operator. It makes no sense, why would we do it? But we're using a really cool thing from the Kubernetes 6, which is called Cube Builder. Right now, if you decide to build a Kubernetes operator, usually you would have three options that would be like, Cube Builder is the Kubernetes official way of implementing uh, operator. You have operator SDK, which is from Red Hat, and you have Meta Controller, if I'm not wrong, from Google Cloud Platform Tools or something. I don't remember how it's actually spelled. 
But operator SDK is getting merged into Cube Builder, so if you're following in how to build an operator, there's usually not a lot of resources. Make sure you're looking at the Cube Builder book. We can talk about that later if it's interesting for you. But yeah, note, we use this to build this. Hell no, do not do this. Do not run this on your production drones. This is how it was supposed, oh yeah, I did not expect the screen to be so huge, so some of the Im images look very imposing. This is actually pretty tiny. So I decided to take a drone, this is a Tello, it's about 80 francs that you can buy from Digitech, but if you wanna buy one which connects to your own Wi-Fi, it costs about 180 because the firmware is unlocked. Thank you. And it did fly once. Afterwards, I burned all the voltage controllers on top because apparently this is not something you're supposed to do, but I still managed to make a demo. So in order to do this, you have to understand that when I said Kubernetes give me an elastic search cluster, what is an elastic search cluster? It doesn't understand. You have to define that in Kubernetes. So we're gonna do that now using drones and swarms. Basically, this is what you define in Go, that's what you get in like YAML because we love YAML. So in this case, I wanted to make sure that I can explain in an easy way what an operator is and what are the necessary resources in order to build one. The first version of this operator included a very simple way of just give me a deployment and give me pods. I, clone, I forked that from Jetstack. They had a really nice controller, but it wasn't cool. I couldn't do Kubernetes get drones and I was really annoyed. So this is why we built this. This was under three hours, trust me, the Go code is really bad, but it works. So, it's experiments. The first one is a drone. The drone doesn't have any specification. It just exists. It has a name, but it does have a status. And that's very important because we need to know which drones are flying, which ones are landing. And then we have a swarm, which is also very important because we need to know how many drones we need to get. And hopefully we can find out, we can have a status in that swarm but that's what you request and that's what you get. The status is not something that you define yourself. This is something that gets returned from the Cube API. Yeah. I, I thought this was a Go meetup, so I just put some Go code and, but the point is, these actually make sense, so it's really important to know. So the drone itself, in that, contr in that controller, we just have this. It needs to know what nodes are available because you saw those drones that had a node attached to them, well, that was a full Kubernetes node. It was running K3S, not full upstream Kubernetes, but it counts. Then, it checks what is available because it needs to know if on that node that is currently supposed to fly, if there is already another drone pod available. I'll explain what a drone pod is. And then, if it's free, please create a pod. Please launch it into the air. And hopefully set a status. This is the Weird part where you would think like, why didn't you use a controller? Why didn't you just launch a deployment? I did, it worked better than what I did, but I, didn't, I couldn't do Kubernetes get drones. So, just put this container on a node that has capacity to launch it, and that container is just a very simple Go application. And what is a drone pod, exactly? Uh, this is something funny. I did not expect to do this, but it was awesome because the Go Tello bot, I forked it and you can check, I have to submit a request because you can't run multiple Tello drones on the same network because apparently not that many people run this. So I noticed that the driver only supports landing the drone in case of emergency when you're doing Control-C and not when Kubernetes is shutting down the pod. So that's like a dirty hack, but the log message is awesome, so I was just happy to have it. And yes, so when you run this on, its, on the node, it will just launch it into the air, and when the pod, get, pod gets terminated, it will land it. So, you need an aggregation. So you can have multiple drones, but let's find a way to like, aggregate them together. Very simple, check if we have drones. If not enough drones, create drones. I think it's straightforward. Yeah, I know I'm rushing through. I'm really happy the screen is huge, so you can actually see the code, so that's awesome. Oh yeah, and we're using the Docker name generator and we have to do a substitution because yes, you can't use underscores in Kubernetes. And if too many, start killing. But my killing algorithm is amazing because it always kills the first one. So that will take time. So if you have multiple, it will start killing one, then it will actually launch it again. And it's, it's horrible, but this is written under three hours, so. Now, the main point of this. I hope this works. I, 
I wasn't sure that I can do a live demo here with drones, so unfortunately, you have to be like, I'm happy this looks cool. On the left side, we're checking what pods are available because in the end, you guys understood, a pod is a drone, or a node is a, a drone is a pod. And you will see the main differences. What we're doing is we're going to request more drones from my swarm. Oh yeah, don't mind the third drone, that one is dead. And I hope, do we have some sort of audio here as feedback? Oh yeah. Yeah, you can hear me typing. I, I tried to get it in sync. Oh yeah, uh, minor thing. So when I created the first one, the uh, propellers actually spinned once, but there is this bug that you have to do it again. I should implement this logic in the operator, but time. I hope it worked. I mean, it should, it's a video, come on. So we have our first drone. We're gonna request a second. Sorry, my Vim skills are horrible. I use visual code. So. Obviously, we have to do exactly the same thing where we kill the same pod again. Come on, type faster. Let's go. I come. When you're on stage, this really takes forever. Yay. Wait, wait, there's the second part. One is launching them. Now, usually I would have to catch them and then turn them off, but it should be able to kill them. So let's go one by one. Of course, it, it killed the first one that launched. Very good logic. <laughs> oh yeah, it, it screwed up, so it didn't update the status on the first time because it didn't do a reconcile loop. Again, don't build operators this way. It makes no sense. Yeah, so the third drone refuses to work. It just doesn't want to do it anymore. That probably happened because I was attaching a battery the other way around, so. <laughs> Behind that, it's this cluster. So the same cluster that I used for Kubernetes the fun way is actually running the entire thing. So the last four are actually Kubernetes masters, so they're running at CD, and the first three are the fake drones. That's it, thank you. If you want to follow the project or whatsoever, just the only thing that I actually care about is like if you create an issue or a pull request on GitHub, then I'll answer. Or you can find me in the Cube Builder Slack channel on uh, Kubernetes, like the Slack. Questions? And note, at Swisscom, we don't use operators written this badly. <laughs> we actually have test frameworks and they work better. I only had like an out of memory kill today, but otherwise it's fine. So yeah, like just small disclaimer. So um, <clears throat> this, this trailer drone has a, has a proper Linux running on it. It's one of those things. No, um, so the only way you can communicate with a teledrone is via UDP. And the cool guys from uh, GoBot actually built a driver for it. So you can, write whatever you want in terms of like drone.land, drone.go left or right or rotate, and it works. But in order to run a Kubernetes node, you have to attach. Uh, it's not really a Raspberry Pi because Raspberry Pi zero is only 32 bit. And good luck running Kubernetes on that. I am using a Rock Pi S, and the problem with that is that it has officially 500 megabytes of RAM, but only available to you is 420. That is not enough to start container D for K3S as a master. But as a worker, it works. So the only time it worked was like on that picture, but then everything burned out. I would recommend using something like the Parrot AR Drone 2.0, which is huge, but that has a USB port on top of it, and the actual drone is running BusyBox. Yeah, because I actually have a drone at home which runs a proper Linux. 
I guess that costs a lot. 400 bucks, second yeah. hand. So in that case, it, depending on your specifications, you can definitely run a nice Kubernetes node. And I would definitely just run a, I think it consumes about 150 megabytes of RAM, what I have for my worker node. So you're, you're like, let me fix the operator and you can try it out. You can try that. <laughs> <laughs> More questions anywhere? Cool. Thank you, everybody. So.